Hello Ice and Fire Nerds, this is Chris and this will continue our Game of Thrones foreshadowing series and we'll pick up where we left off in Season 1, Episode 4, Cripples, Bastards, and Broken Things. Alright, so let's jump right in and we open up where Theon is telling Bran he needs to go downstairs to meet with Rob. Bran doesn't want to go and we see this. The little lord's been dreaming again. We have visitors. We don't want to see anyone. So the first thing is that Theon comes in and Summer immediately jumps up and growls at Theon and he usually doesn't growl at anybody but Bran's enemies and I think that kind of hints at this. I've taken your castle. <laughs> Theon? It's Prince Theon now. Get up. You have to get dressed. I've taken Winterfell. And another little goody here in this scene with Theon about his future, and he says this to Bran. If I was cooped up all day with no one but this old bat for company, I'd go mad. Yes, you will go mad, Theon. Yes, you will. You reek. Reek! It's a good name for you. What's your name? Theon Greyjoy. And some more goodies from this same scene here. We see the first introduction to Hodor. Now, we had actually seen him already in Season 1, Episode 1, Winter is Coming. But we just got introduced to him the first time in this scene, and he actually does this. Hodor. Hodor. So they could have done this a lot differently. I do think this was definitely deliberate. The first thing we see Hodor do when we're introduced to him as far as who he is, what his name is, and what his role is going to be as far as helping Bran, he actually walks through a damn door. Hold the door! 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 I do think this was done on purpose because they could have done this in any number of ways. Hodor could have already been in the room. And also to add to this about the future of Hodor and Bran together, we also hear Theon say this. Hodor? Help Bran down the hall. Hodor. So I think this kind of ties into the same episode in season six when we see this. Hodor. So yes, in the context of the scene, Theon is telling Hodor to help Bran down the hall to go meet Rob, but of course he could have said anything. They could have had a completely different line here. He could have said help him down the stairs, help him out of the bed, whatever, but he specifically says help him down the hall. So I think that tied in with Hodor actually coming through a doorway actually points to season six and the big reveal about Hodor, where his name came from and who he is and how he essentially dies taking Bran down the hallway in Bloodraven's cave. And in our next scene, we see Tyrion and Rob having a little conversation as Tyrion heads south as he leaves the wall and he stops by Winterfell. Slightly warmer welcome on my last visit. Any man of the Night's Watch is welcome at Winterfell. Any man of the Night's Watch, but not I, eh, boy? I'm not your boy, Lannister. I'm Lord of Winterfell while my father is away. And you might learn a Lord's courtesy. Now, Rob's being a bit of an asshole here because he believes Tyrion being a Lannister is involved somehow with the attempted murder of Bran, so he calls him boy out of spite and then tells him he needs to learn a lord's courtesy. Now, this could be a bit of a reach, but I think it kind of leads to this. Yeah, speak my mind, your grace. Have you not been speaking your mind, Lord Karstark? I think you lost this war the day you married her. So later on when Rob becomes King of the North, he is promised to marry one of Walter Frey's daughters or granddaughters, but instead in the show he marries Talisa, a little bit different in the books, but the point being here that he didn't learn a lord's courtesy like Tyrion told him to, he didn't uphold his vow and his promise, and that ultimately led to Rob's demise. Also during this same scene, Bran comes in of course with Hodor, and we see Tyrion give him the plans for his saddle. I have a gift for you. Give that to your saddler. He'll provide the rest. You must shape the horse to the rider. Start with a yearling and teach her to respond to the reins and to the boy's voice. Will I really be able to ride? You will. On horseback, you'll be as tall as any of them. 
Now, I don't think there's any particular foreshadowing here necessarily. I do think this was a genuine move on Tyrion's part to show his goodwill towards Bran and the Starks because he is different from the other Lannisters as far as Cersei and Jaime. And I think this was kind of meant to tell us that because after all, at the end of this same episode, he does get arrested by Catelyn with no proof whatsoever. But I just wanted to throw this out here for you guys because I know a lot of people think that him designing a saddle perhaps foreshadows something like Bran riding a dragon or Bran even warging a dragon. And I do think that's certainly possible, although at this point I don't really believe that. I don't believe it's necessary with Bran's green seer abilities. But in my opinion, that was just Tyrion being Tyrion and actually showing some goodwill towards the Starks. And in our next scene, we see Tyrion and Theon talking in the yard as Tyrion heads out to find himself a brothel because he's not really digging Rob's hospitality. If you like redheads, ask for Roz. Come to see me off, Greyjoy. Kind of you. Your master doesn't seem to like Lannisters. He's not my master. No. The lady's whereabouts. The lady? <laughs> Your loyalty to your captors is touching. So this is a direct parallel to this scene in season six. Last time we saw each other was at Winterfell, yes? You were making jokes about my height, I seem to recall. You're all making the same five or six jokes. It was a long time ago. It was. Now, although this scene is a direct parallel, and Tyrion even says so in the scene itself in Season 6, I think there's a little bit of a continuity problem here, because if you look back at the scene in Winterfell in Season 1, Tyrion was kind of the one being an asshole to Theon, kind of making fun of him for being essentially Ned Stark's hostage, as they talked about Balon Greyjoy, the Greyjoy Rebellion, which gives us a little bit of a backstory on why Theon's there in the first place, being a Greyjoy, and kind of goes along with previous hints I mentioned as far as Summer growling at Theon, kind of giving us his backstory about why he's there, him kind of thinking about why he's there, and he's been held hostage all these years and that ends up leading to Theon's rebellion and taking over Winterfell. But anyway this was a parallel scene but they really didn't get that right as far as Tyrion acting like he was the one being picked on the entire time in season one. And in our next scene at Castle Black we get an introduction to Samuel Tarly. I yield! Please no more! On your feet. So we're introduced to Sam and his legendary fighting skills, but after he gets his ass whipped a little bit, John specifically says this. My mother calls me Sam. It's not gonna get any easier, you know. You're gonna have to defend yourself. Yes, you are, Sam. You're going to have to defend yourself, and you're going to do that for the first time here. And in that same scene in episode four, we hear John tell Sam this as well. Father always says so. The wall's no place for cowards. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I just wanted to thank you. And this, of course, leads to this. To ask something of you. Send me, Gilly and the baby to Old Town so I can become a master. So we get introduced to Sam in episode four. We realize he's the most cowardly guy we've met in the entire series yet, and he ends up being the first one to kill a White Walker, hence the name Sam the Slayer. All right, guys, that'll do it for this episode. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I will try to keep these coming, damn near daily uploads. Be sure to let me know what I've missed, and also let me know if there's anything that these scenes that I did mention actually point to other things as well. So anyway, guys, as usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon. A huge shout out to my executive Patreon smokescreen producers, Paul Griffin, Volga10, Lala Gig, and Kisa Powell. Thank you so much, you guys. Really, really appreciate it. And a few people have opted out of shout outs, but thank you to you guys as well. Everybody on Patreon and all you guys, I really, really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to Get Her Thing, and be sure to click that notification button beside the subscribe button to make sure you get notified when I drop a new video. And make sure you're still subscribed to Smokescreen if you have been before, because apparently some people are still being unsubscribed and they don't even know it. So anyway, guys, thanks so much. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you.